I'm Tim Kittrow, and here to bring home the bacon are Big Rye and the Fat Guy. My little chunky boy is sleeping. What's up, YouTube? It's the NFL Picks Against the Spread oh for Week goodness. 12. Fat Guy, we are 79, 79, and 6. Good for exactly 50% on the button, as I usually am. Fat Guy, on to the Thursday Thanksgiving edition games. Buffalo Bills at the always Detroit Lions hosting that first Thanksgiving game. Lions plus 9 at home, 63% of early betters are on the Lions. Fat guy, who you got? Uh, we're going to take Detroit here. I mean, there's some uh, suspicion, I don't know, perhaps, with some Josh Allen injury, and that that could move the line a little bit here. Uh, n- like, nine seems indifferent. Like, I still think it's probably favoring Detroit. Like, I feel like this is an eight and a half, but, like, what's the push frequency on nine? Has anyone even lost by nine, like, this entire season? So it's, like, kind of a misnomer number. And, you know, I've kind of probably irked a lot of people because I just talk about the number because that's what we're betting on is which way this number is going to go, right? Like, any reason you think, oh, Aiden Hutchinson, X, Y, and Z, well, Aiden Hutchinson, this is baked in the line. The people that put this line, the people that are betting on this, know that he's playing well and Detroit is playing well. Like, Josh Allen injury, is that baked into this line? Like, you have to think in that sort of, uh, I'm not really sure. Outside of the box isn't a good one. I hate that uh, colloquialism or that cliche. But you have to think like, like what isn't included in this, right? And so think about it this way: if you take Detroit plus nine, and Josh Allen's fine, and this is an equilibrium line, great. If it isn't, um, you might lose what half a point, right? Like this might go to nine and a half, and maybe ten. You might give up a push frequency on ten. But if he is actually hurt and his performance is affected by it, um, like this really is what a six and a half game. Like I think you're more to gain one way than the other. So I still isn't a bet in real life, but as far as the contest goes, it'd be certainly a Detroit plus nine. Two and a half percent of games uh, have finished at nine points over the last seven hundred. Actually, a lot or more so than sample. I thought. Uh, The least out of the single digits, other than obviously a tie. New York Giants at the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys minus eight at home. 48% of early betters are on the Cowboys. Fat guy, who you got? Ah, This is a hold your nose and take Dallas. And this is strange, too, because, like, why would you take, like, this is not how I would do things. This would be a classic big ride in the fat guy. Giants plus eight. Oh, we're getting over seven and a half. But which, where do I think, like, I don't know. Not that closing line value wasn't valuable perhaps five years ago, but I I can almost guarantee it was less valuable, you know, and I think I think this will get steamed up to like Giants minus 10 or sorry, uh, rather Cowboys minus 10. I think it's already trending in the eight and a half direction. Eight and a half is uh, actually a little bit more of a valuable number uh, than before, considering games are finishing with a higher frequency of eight than, like I said, five and six years ago. Uh, you know, I'm glad I, you know, I, I, I thought nine was less like, it's not key at all. The least of the single digits, like you mentioned, but two and a half is actually scary. I didn't know it was that high. I was going to guess like one, but anyways, I think this line finishes Dallas minus nine and a half, perhaps Dallas minus 10. So in the contest, not in real life, because it's just a, uh, uh, non-market personal prognostication on the closing line. So let's take uh dallas let's lay the eight points next up we have new england at minnesota for the final thanksgiving game vikings are minus two and a half point favorites despite how they looked on sunday 56 percent of early betters are on the vikings fat guy who you got well you know you can you can bash them with that but like it's not like the patriots look that good i mean you can highlight anything you can highlight a special teams play that happened in dramatic fashion you can highlight a defense that played against a very poorly operating uh, offense, but they weren't that good. They put three points up against the Jets, okay, up until the last five seconds. They weren't exactly shining stars. Minnesota, I got to give their coach credit. They pulled the plug once they knew that the game was out of reach and they weren't. Like, I actually like that. Like, live to fight another day. This isn't the playoffs. You don't have to, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, like, fire off your entire arsenal. I think it was the right move. I like Minnesota in this spot. I think this should be three, and dare I say, 
three and a half with bad juice on New England. I think they'll be closing line value. I'm going to probably take this in real life. So I do like the Vikings. And why do I keep mentioning closing line value? Is what it means is the, the closing line is the last number before the game starts, before the market closes. And why do I think that number is significant? That number with the juice. Once you start learning to read juice, you can kind of understand juice is the number associated, the commission, right? Like this could be minus 110, minus 110 at a rec book. Some books might have it minus 106, minus 106. But, um, you know, it could be minus 118, minus 102. That'll give you an idea of where it's headed. But why the closing line is so important is that's when everyone's opinions are taken in. And the closing line allows the highest limits. So think of it this way. When the, a lot of these lines open, you can only get down two to $5,000. And you could say that's a lot of money. And it is to some people. But to the betting world, when you're trying to eke out a 2% edge, 2% of... Uh, five thousand dollars is it's not that's not a lot you know so you have to think of it in terms of uh what is it 200 bucks like that's not like that's what you're gonna make the long term you're not gonna risk the five thousand but it's uh to make the 200 but if you keep making those bets that's about what you'd make so at the closing line they books will let you bet a hundred grand so why would they only bet you let you bet two to five thousand at open and 100 grand at close is because the number is so strong on both sides that it's going to be hard to beat the vigorish or the commission, um, the juice. It's going to be hard to beat the juice. You know, a lot of these have a hold. You know, I'm using a lot of jargon here. I can't help myself. I talk about this stuff all day. You know, they have a, a, a bookie advantage of 4%. You know, if it's baseball too, it doesn't matter. They believe that the number, the true probabilities <clears throat> on both teams is within that bookie hold the true probability so they can't lose long term taking action so they do and all you need to do is have a big bankroll and they do have a bigger bankroll than you i promise well not everywhere i guess but anyways closing line is important minnesota minus two and a half i think it closes at minus three minus three and a half bad juice against minnesota at the low at the most so after Turkey Day, on to Sunday's games. Baltimore at Jacksonville. Jacksonville plus three and a half at home. 29% of early betters are on the Jaguars. Fat guy, who you got? I uh, really like this one I'm kind of torn at. It's going to be Baltimore minus three and a half. I think it closes at Baltimore minus four and a half. But that's not a strong close. And one of the reasons why I wouldn't bet this in real life, because if this closes at Baltimore minus three, this probably like when a team is favored, it's roughly like an eight to nine percent chance that they win that game by three. So that push frequency is extremely strong, and push frequency means how, how often it lands on that number. And we just said it's two and a half percent, just from a frequency standpoint, and just this season on the number nine. Uh, historically speaking, the favorite win it's about eight to nine percent that that number three is worth. But that's if you go, anyways. There's a high push frequency on number three so it feels silly to take it three and a half uh with the chance that it could go down to three however i think it's way more likely that it goes to baltimore minus four and a half so for contest closing line value we'll take baltimore minus four and a half fact i on to tampa bay at cleveland cleveland plus three at home 29 percent of early betters are on the browns who you got yeah, this is a tough one. I, I I think it's probably equilibrium. It's going to be a, a Cleveland plus three. I you know what I mean. I like either team at either number. I like Cleveland at three and a half in real life with good juice, like like low, like minus one hundred four. I like that. I like Tampa minus two and a half, minus one hundred four. You know, I think the there's a lot of stock in this number three. So this will be purely a contest. But Cleveland Browns. Um, but I do like both teams on either sides of that number. On to the game that was kind of a coin flip before we started this, but Chicago Bears at the New York Jets. Jets minus four and a half at home. 42% of early betters on the Jets. Fat guy, who you got? Well, there's some Justin Fields discomfort. And even though they might be up against, uh, I, I still think it'll be Zach Wilson. I don't like how they highlighted and said that, uh, uh, Robert Salas said everything's on the table, but let's just like coach speak for like, you know, we want to improve. Like th we're going to make any change to try and make this team better, which is good. It's, it's good. Maybe it doesn't include Zach Wilson, but 
it's not like he's going to be a monumental downgrade to go to Mike White or even Joe Flacco, whereas a injured Justin Fields um, or a backup uh, Chicago Bear quarterback, I think that'll play more drastically. And this could shift up to Jets minus six and a half, maybe Jets minus seven um, with the juice against them, like a uh, juiced up Bears set, uh, plus seven. So I do think that like, this is one of those ones where, like, I don't like laying four and a half with the Jets. I mean, they didn't even score four and a half points over four and a half points last game, right? Like, this isn't like it's this is supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be. It's uh, kind of like in poker. The 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 highest level of poker is to make your opponent indifferent. That's what a lot of these are. These are really supposed to be fifty fifty propositions that have a commission attached to them. So four and a half is supposed to be hard. And especially because there's a lot of uncertainty, but I like taking the risk here with the Jets. I'm actually going to consider it in real life. I might just consider a Jets money line. Like, uh, that would be in consideration. I don't mind laying it, uh, depending on what price you're going to get here. So, what do you got there? Is uh, Jets minus 185, if I were off the top of my head? This is one of the games that isn't currently up uh, on Pinnacle. So there isn't actually yes. a, a juice associated with this yeah. game at the at this uh, a, at the time of recording. Okay, so this this actually ties in a little bit more. Um, usually the money line market and the spread market move in kind of a linear fashion. Like X money line is usually attached to X spread. It's a little bit decoupled right now because there is probably some strong uncertainty in terms of not only Justin Fields availability, but this is one of the years where I have found that books gamble a little bit more with like, they have like an injured quarterback line. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, they have, they have all year. It's been really strange. They've done it with the chargers. Um, they, I can't recall off the top of my head, but there's been a bunch of them. They kind of did with Arizona. Uh, the eight and a half seemed in the middle. Do you know what I mean? And when it confirmed Colt McCoy is playing at one to 10, but it felt like that, like it should have been a seven with Kyler Murray and even a six and a half. So it's been really, really interesting. And, um, and you know what? I think they did uh, the New Orleans Saints, LA Rams. Like the four and a half open felt like a middle between Wolford and uh, Matt Stafford playing. And then Stafford playing pushed it two and a half. So this this might be one of those middle of the roads here. Because I think of field play, fields plays. This is a Jets minus three all day. Like, I just feel like, like this might be a middle of the road one. So I like the Jets. I like the Jets money line, but it looks like it's going to be difficult to to get down. I'm looking one of the books that offers it uh, that I or is available to me is going to uh, offer it. So I am going to jump on the Jets here uh, at the conclusion of this uh, show. So the contest pick will be Jets minus four and a half. I'm going to take Jets money line currently. Don't lay more than minus 230. Don't because and. And don't forget, too, like I said, it's a little bit decoupled. Like, minus 230 used to be the price for, like, a minus 7. Things are different now and more sharp. But I still think the probability is in your favor with, like, Jets minus 215 even. So, As a comparable, Washington Commanders minus 209, and then they're minus 4.5 at minus 103. So that kind of gives you an idea of what it is. But that would be under that minus 230, like, like you said. But and you can get the commanders at minus 193 as well. Like that's the best line available I'm looking at. So it is, it's a few cents off. It is. Fat guy on to the next game, which is going to be the Cincinnati Bengals traveling to Tennessee to take on the Titans who are one point dogs at home. 74% of early betters are on Tennessee. Fat guy, who you got? We're, we're just going to go with Cincinnati here. I don't, I am completely indifferent. Uh, they, they've, they've beaten me as a, as an opponent. So I think this mar- the market has me on this one. I don't really like either side. It'll be purely a contest pick. And this is a game I want to see. Like Cincinnati's kind of turned the corner a little bit. And same with Tennessee. Tennessee is an underrated team as far as coaching goes. Like I that game yeah. against Cincinnati or sorry, against Kansas City was masterful. You know how hard that is to do against a team like that that just seemingly can score at will when they need to. I understand they still lost. But they threw, completed eight passes, I think, last time that we touched on it. I still am enamored with that type of uh, resolve, you know, to use a uh, 
Well, they try to so. win. Like there's strategy behind what they're win. trying to do. They they play to their strengths. They they attack the other team's weaknesses, and they're mentally tough. And they come to play pretty much every week. It's I don't know how you couldn't be ecstatic with having Vrabel as a head coach. Uh, like watching um, Nathaniel Hackett last week, who oh, they they oh got my. burned by a big play. Uh, they have um, timeouts left. The other team doesn't. The other team's running down the field trying to to clock it, and so they go to spike it on the goal line, first and goal, and Hackett decides to call a timeout. So he literally saved it down for the 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 other team, and, that and gave them an extra the chance at the part. end zone. On third down, Russell Wilson threw it away. Yeah. Take it, go down. That's forty yeah, slide. seconds. Yeah. Slide. Take the it's, sack. Uh, Are you kidding me? And that's a guy that's. Like he's a Hall of Famer, and and then it it, it it speaks to me like you just said it like he's got to be the worst coach in the NFL, whereas Rabel like, you know, is it baked in how good they are? Like remember that time they tricked Houston like two years ago, and they ended up winning the game, into I can't remember it was declining or it was accepting a penalty perhaps and it stopped the clock. I can't recall the specifics of it, but like, man, they really seem to, you know, it's not obviously him alone, but like his staff. He seems to be good at delegator and good at hiring. I mean, Big Rye used a bunch of sports cliches, but what we're trying to do is explain that maybe, or our opinion rather, that maybe Tennessee isn't, you know, there's some underrated uh, coaching prowess here in Mike Vrabel because he looks like a meathead, sounds like a meathead. He's not. He's not. Uh, they're, they're pretty sharp, those Titans. And don't forget, like, Arthur Smith, a guy who's made a, the worst roster in the NFL compete every single game. Yeah. Like he he came from Tennessee, and I don't think it's a coincidence. Um, you know, I'm we're not taking the Tennessee Titans. I I like watching the Titans though. I want to see this game. I think Cincinnati's an interesting team as well. So we're gonna take uh, Cincinnati. We're gonna lay the one point. Purely a contest pick, but but intrigue is from a fan standpoint because these are two like decent teams. And I uh, you know something about the Chiefs just rubs me the wrong way. Like. It's like the, the I've seen this movie before. It gets boring. These teams aren't boring. I like watching them. Yeah, this is definitely a five star entertainment <laughs> game. On to the next one, which is going to be the Houston Texans at the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins minus twelve and a half at home. Ninety percent of early betters are on the Dolphins. I like watching the Dolphins play, but this is kind of what you're saying. Like this is a uh, this is not going to be a five star entertainment game. <laughs> well, it's the first time I haven't seen you give a ringing endorsement. Uh, this is another one, but this one I'm actually. I don't care to watch. Not that interested in. I'm going to take uh, Houston plus 12 and a half. It's purely a contest pick. And I don't have any market insight or ideas beyond that. Contest pick, not touching in real life. Houston plus 12 and a half. Fat guy, next one. Atlanta Falcons at the Washington Football Commanders. Minus four and a half at home. 67% of early betters are on the 1932 established Washington football commanders. Who you got? Well, that, that'd that probably be a better name. Than, I hate commander's name. Can we go back to football team? Really? That was just a beautiful name. It was golden. Uh, it really was. Uh, we're going to take the Atlanta Falcons here. Four and a half. I find this oddly strange. Like, like why? Like it, it was, it opened at two and a half last week against Houston. And now it's, you know, I guess it's on the road, but the home field means so little these days. Four and a half against Atlanta. This just seems off. I mean, it's, but it's the NFL. Like, how off could it really be? It's kind of like Minnesota. Like, are they, like, why are they even dogs against Dallas? And then look what happens, right? Like, this is one of those spots where I could see the commanders giving them a pummeling. But, uh, you know, I get a contest pick. I think this number is good. Uh, we're going to take Atlanta plus four and a half. And I do think it closes at, at Washington Commanders minus three. But it just something feels fishy about this one, you know, much like the Minnesota uh, Cowboys. So we're going to take Atlanta. It'll be a contest pick. And I'm curious to see how the market moves in real life. It's interesting to think that the, the public is on Washington. Like that's what that line tells me is that the public is on on Washington. Denver Broncos at the Carolina Panthers. Panthers plus two and a half point underdogs at home. It's a 50-50 split. Fat guy, who you got? Well, I mean, I'd lay three and a half if they picked a guy out of the crowd to coach the Denver Broncos. But at two and a half, <laughs> at two and a half, we're going to take the Broncos here. 
this is one of those ones where like I hate handicapping, but this roster mismatch, like if you were to look at this on paper at the start of the season, you would think Denver minus seven, like Yeah. But but it's just some of the most abysmal coaching I have ever seen. I, I would have fired him by now, I gotta be honest, and I would have fired myself for hiring him. <laughs> it's not even a joke. Like you those two play like they lost the Raiders so needlessly. And this is the other thing too. As far as like defenses goes, I actually think Denver probably is the best defense in the league. They're on the field constantly. And they're play like think if it's Denver's- like the Chiefs. It's like the Chiefs, what, ten years ago? Yes. Yes. This big Ryan I's first bet. It was you made a huge bet on the Chiefs uh over seven and a half wins. They won nine in a row. And my contention was is that when you looked at the the time of the field, time of possession, they were on the field 39 minutes a game, just over 39 minutes, which is like, think about that disadvantage. It's almost two to one. Like every defense is going to get tired. And that was uh, because the year before the Matt Castle Chiefs turned it over and then they flipped it. They went from being on the field the most, on field the least. And what do you know? They had best, second best defense in the entire league because the roster was just stacked. I mean, if, if Denver could put up 21 a game, they'd probably be close to undefeated, <laughs> like if not undefeated. So this is just really, really strange to me how bad the offense – and it's an offensive coach too. But on the flip side, it's been a really good defense. I don't know why I'm handicapping. <clears throat> Maybe because it's just been so off market. And it, there really should this really shouldn't be a minus 2.5 game. It's, the number should be way higher. We're going to lay the 2.5 points here on the worst coach I have – I'm probably gonna do it in real life too. I can't believe it. On the worst coach, and, and I, like this guy's giving Hugh Jackson a run. <laughs> I was just you know? gonna say when you were saying worst, I was ready to throw in Hugh's name, but <laughs> Hugh Jackson is actually just like he should be watching these games with vigor, going maybe they'll stop talking about me, just maybe. So Nathaniel Hackett, can you salvage something here and just have like a 20 point performance? That's not 17 will probably do it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's take the Broncos, lay the two and a half points. I bet you Hugh Jackson probably would have drafted Josh Allen too now. Yes, he would uh, On to the oh, next yeah. game. Las Vegas Raiders at the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks minus three and a half point favorites at home. 57% of early betters on the Hawks. Fat guy, who you got? Uh, we know that I think this closes uh, Seahawks minus three with bad juice on the Seahawks. So that hook means everything to me. It's, it's how I've made made uh, made out pretty well so far this season because that hook in the various things that I participate in to keep it as vague as possible. But uh, I, I think this closes at, like I said, Seahawks minus three, bad juice on the Seahawks. So I think this hook is the, is the way to go. Give me the Raiders. Give me the three and a half points. Keeping it vague with the Vegas Raiders. On to the next game, which is the LA Chargers at the Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals plus three and a half at home, 10%. Of early betters on the cards. Fat guy. This is one of those games where there isn't currently a line because Arizona just finished playing. But at a lot of terrible books, they've got this listed at three and a half. Yeah, that's why this is one of those, like, uh, I think middle of the road lines. Like, I, I know Murray was really, he's a game time decision, but like, I don't, I don't know why you'd rush him back either. Like, it's not, you know, it's a Colt, a Colt McCoy start. I don't think is out of the question here. So, I know it's weird, like three and a half on the road for the Chargers, but I still think it's the right move here. I'm not ready to do it in real life, but as a contest pick, I do like it. So we're gonna lay three and a half here. I think this could close all the way up to five and a half. But then again, three and a half to five and a half isn't like strong mobility. Like four and a half and five and a half aren't key numbers. So that it seems like a two point shift sounds drastic but it's very possible considering the lack of uh, importance of those numbers so just contest pick and am curious about the market though lac minus three and a half next up we have the la rams traveling to kansas city to take on the chiefs who are 14 and a half point favorites at home 52 percent of early betters still on the chiefs even though they're greater than a two touchdown favorite fat guy who you got well they're probably playing john wolford so you know, or what would like whoever they trotted out in the second half of the LA Rams game, if they play that guy, like this just, it's just so weird. It's like one of those calls, like 
uh, Chiefs minus 14 and a half in this spot against the Rams is kind of akin to like one of those uh, college games where it's like minus 39 and a half. Like it just seems so outlandish to price. You know, that's a that's a testament to my very poor Bayesian math skills. But um, we're going to just take a contest pick. We're going to take the Rams. I'm, I won't be watching this game. That's a promise. Yeah, that's uh, quarterback Bryce Perkins, number 16 on your program. Is he a receiver? 2020 uh, free agent. Oh, there we According go. According to our lads. On to the next game, which is going to be the New Orleans Saints traveling to San Fran to take on the 49ers, who are eight-point favorites at home, 51% of early betters on San Fran. Fat guy, who you got? Yeah, I I find I'm pretty indifferent about this one as well, especially this number. I'm not really sure which way it's going to go. Um, I wonder if there's like where I could see an edge because I, we're going to take New Orleans in the points purely contest. I know it's a meme, uh, but I wonder where this could be an edge. I feel like San Francisco, sorry, New Orleans rather, like when they give up a uh, some sort of like offensive liability when there's like a mismatch, I don't think they adjust very well. Like the Arizona game really felt like that. Same with the uh, the Baltimore Ravens game, even more so. Like I, I think they can become a dumpster fire very, very fast. So, like I wonder if there's a live game, live betting edge on the San Francisco 49ers if they're able to leverage uh, some sort of defensive advantage over Andy Dalton. I mean, this is just a pure hypothesis considering. I don't have a beat or at least an opinion on which way the market's going to go. So, uh, I, you know, have to give some, you know, float some of my ideas there. But then again, I don't have data to back this up. It's just an idea, you know. It's kind of like I always, I always have, I have a mountain of ideas that are just so hard to test. It's kind of like I, I felt the same way about Nick Kyrgios. If, if, uh, for you tennis fans out there, as far as in-game betting, I feel like he, once he's in a hole, like he doesn't, he doesn't really try. It kind of gives up. So not that New Orleans gives up, but I don't feel like they have a lot of bounce back potential. So despite you know coming back from fourteen ten, they were playing a backup quarterback. It was a lot easier. Contest pick New Orleans plus eight. And on to Sunday Night Football: Green Bay Packers at the Philadelphia Eagles, who are six and a half point favorites at home. Seventy percent of early betters are on the Eagles. Fat guy, does this line stay at six and a half? No. I think it closes. Bold prediction. Eagles minus seven and a half. I think that's where the closing line is. And I think that gives it strong value. Eagles minus six and a half. I don't like who's back in Green Bay at this point. Like there can't be a strong contingent. I just don't think it's possible. The Eagles, yeah, they cost some people some teasers, whatever. They've lost one game. You know, I mean, people are gonna like sports shows will do the oh, they haven't looked good in the last two games. It all that stuff is is uh noise and it should be separated from the signal to quote nate silver um i i like the eagles i like minus six and a half i think the market is more likely to shift towards or uh, against the eagles in terms of the the number and i think it's going to close at eagles minus seven and a half so i do like philadelphia in real life and in the contest eagles minus six and a half and then on to monday night football full slate of games this week all 16 no buys uh on to uh Monday night, Pittsburgh Steelers at the Indianapolis Colts. Colts minus two and a half, 39% of early betters on the Colts. Fat guy, who you got? We're going to take the Colts. We're going to lay the two and a half points, and I'm actually interested in this game. Um, I think Pittsburgh is an interesting team, and I think Indy is an interesting team. Uh, if this goes to like three and a half before close, I'll probably buy back on the Steelers. You know, I do like that number three. I am infatuated with it. Hook means everything. This is a contest pick, though. I don't feel strongly about Colts minus two and a half. But if midweek, for whatever reason, not like a damning injury or against the Steelers or anything, but if the market does push the Steelers all the way to two and or all the way to plus three and a half, I will buy back on it. And but I really five percent chance I think that that even happens. But I have to give out some sort of market insight if I do believe I have it. So, you know. Not that I've been, uh, you know, not I'm the best handicapper in the world or market prognosticator, I think would be a better term because I'm certainly not a handicapper uh, these days anymore, at least. So contest pick Indianapolis minus two and a half. All right, fat guy, on to the lightning round. Buffalo at Detroit. Detroit Lions. Giants at Dallas. Dallas Cowboys. New England at Minnesota. 
Minnesota Vikings. The Sunday games, Baltimore at Jacksonville. Baltimore Ravens. Tampa Bay at Cleveland. Cleveland Browns. Chicago at the Jets. New York Jets. Cincinnati at Tennessee. Cincinnati Bengals. Houston, Miami. Houston, Texas. Atlanta, Washington. Atlanta Falcons. Denver at Carolina. Oh, Denver Broncos. Holy. <laughs> Midday games. Las Vegas Las at Vegas. Seattle. Las Vegas Raiders. Chargers, Cards. L.A. Chargers. Rams, Chiefs. L.A. Rams. Saints, Niners. New Orleans Saints. Sunday Night Football, Green Bay at Philly. Philadelphia Eagles. Pittsburgh at Indy, Monday Indy night. Indy Colts. Congratulations to <laughs> congratulations <laughs> to Fat Guy's best friend going 10-3 and 1 against Everyone's the spread. Got one. Four week 11, 77%. And uh this was actually our first tiebreaker of the year, Fat Guy. We had two people go 10-3 and 1. I'll get you to uh well, I tell you to guess, but you'd get it right, and that's right. It is CEO Eric Hayden, 10 3 and 1. But easy, uh Went for the over under of 40. Fat Guy's best friend at 50, closer to the pin. So congratulations to Fat Guy's best friend, but also a shout out to CEO Eric Hayden. And let's just keep the love going because CEO Eric Hayden, 98, 60, and 6, 62% against the spread. As you can see there, what, 6.3% above the next Man, person, which I, is Luke Dog, like, who is no slouch. No, that's a great season. 88 and 70. 98 and 60. I, I don't. This is the best record we've ever seen. I think so at this point. We had someone um, last year, Cassone. Cassone was close. He he was above 60 for a while, but I don't Major remember sample, 98 though. and 60. Yeah, I don't remember. That I don't good. remember at this sample. So congratulations, Co Eric Hayden. You're hilarious and you're killing this contest. So thank yes. you for that. On to the JS715 name of the week. Honorable mentions, fat guy. This season's record be like Big Y and the Flat Guy. I like it. Bring the heat. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Macho Man says Fat Guy is terrible at football picks. Well, it's President, it's uh, distinguished President Jack Tunney's fault, I'm sure. Saturday sermon. In a way, they're they're. <laughs> in a way, for me, Saturday uh, is that important. And I did go see Sunday sermon, just so you know. A little little uh, pious old Fat Guy. I seen a phone booth cover. <laughs> covered in snow it reminded me of fat guy i am a giant fat man duffins has the best fried chicken bigger i can't enough can't can't get enough i actually think, they think have you're looking good the best donuts i haven't tried their fried chicken i gotta look up that email i have an idea of who they are i bet they live in new west gb wins by a field goal and now aaron Rodgers is great he's pretty good multiple mvp seasons why the plugs uh hey, they're, they're in they're look at they don't in. even come out that's great so good Niacine pills for all. I could use a couple. This is the JS715 name of the week. Whoa, kaboom! Fat guy and Rye and like to get jiggy with it off screen. I think we know who's pitching and who's catching. Gotta bore that hole out. Yep, Barracks Buddies 3 on the way. That's right. Thank you guys for being members of this channel. If you want to support Big Ryan the Fat Guy, hit join down below. It's five bucks a month. And uh, Fat Guy's got some amazing stuff that he's been working on, honestly. Make your picks against the spread for week 12 at BigRyanTheFatGuy.com. Fat Guy, that is it. That's the week 12 picks in the book. You're th uh, who cares about these games? Your Thanksgivings, Thanksgiving thoughts. Um, I, I always say uh, I have four sisters, so I always uh, start the year off with giving thanks to the ones that I like. And uh, that's, I assume you guys do the same. Be thankful for the family members you actually like. <laughs> Good luck for your picks in week 12. <laughs> <laughs>